biggest problems for me right now in the state of Maine is a lot of the value Excuse added. What? One of the biggest problems for me right now in the state of Maine is a lot of the value added products from our natural resources are added outside of the state, such as lobster processing plants located in Canada, wood processing plants located in Canada. What can we do to encourage them to come to Maine aside from lowering costs? Why, like, why hasn't this already happened? I guess is my question. And um, I don't know if you've heard about the last cannery in Maine closing in Hillsborough. Mm -hmm. What can the state of Maine do to encourage to encourage facilities like that in the state of Maine to be used for these purposes? Well, it, it, is, it is the things I talked about are really important, so I don't want to discount any of those. But we're hurting. I mean, you're, you're talking. Those are those are the herring are the, are the debate for the lobsters too, as well as you know sardines. So, in terms of our future, we have to have the, the fish processing here, the lobster processing. We don't want to be shipping logs out of the state. We want to take those logs and, and make innovative products here. It it is marketing. A lot of it's marketing, and the other is making sure that uh, we we we're 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 uh, competing with Canada, with Nova Scotia, and I mean with New Brunswick in this case, New Brunswick. And competing with New Brunswick, there's governmental subsidies. We don't give all those governmental subsidies. So we need to look at that. Why are we, what is the competitive advantage that a, that a fish processing plant has being in, you know, in New Brunswick versus being in, uh, in, in this case, uh, uh, it was uh, in the uh, Google world, yeah. So it, it's, it's, it's basically uh, making sure that our government is doing everything we can to provide the access to capital, uh, to market the product, uh, and to assist those companies that want to stay here. Part of that, you know, was a lack of the, the replenishment of the fishing stock. I mean, that was part of why they left. It wasn't just it's a tough place to do business. And we're working hard on replenishing, as you know, fishing stocks. Ground fishing is, is really a lot of ground fishermen in, in, uh, in, in Stonington and Deer Isle and places like that. You have adults my age who are, they're just heartbroken because they, their grandfathers and their great-grandfathers were fishermen and they don't see their children and grandchildren doing that anymore. And that means that these places are going to change. You're going to see a migration out of young people. <coughs> to sum up, I just want to say thank you very much. I want to, I want to compliment all of the <coughs> students at the University of Maine at Farmington. It's one of the best academic institutions, not just in Western Maine, not just in the state of Maine, not just in the United States, but the world. And you know that. This place is rated really high in terms of the education that you receive, and I think you're very lucky to be here, and I thank you for being there. Uh, I've gone on long enough. I just want to I'd ask for your support. My name is Steve Rowe. I'm a Democrat. I'm proud to be a Democrat, uh, and, uh, but as your governor, I'll be the governor of the entire state, uh, of all people. I'll work hard. You won't find anybody who'll work harder. You won't find anybody who'll be more honest, and I'll bring in smart people, innovative people, and put together a long-term strategic plan for the state move this state forward and make sure that you young people can stay here in Maine and find your economic futures here. Thank you very much. Can I make one more statement? Absolutely can. Here's the deal. A question was asked, uh, I, I think, earlier by Mrs. Westcott about domestic <coughs> violence. I just want to say this about just, I have some strong thoughts about this. There's a reason that men abuse women, and it's not because you woke up one day and you didn't get a good night's sleep or you had some alcohol, it's because of what happened when you were a little boy in most cases. And there are too many little boys and little girls growing up in this state that are growing up in homes and they're watching a man abuse a woman. It's mom and her husband or mom and mom's boyfriend. And these little boys and girls watch this. And then if they go to daycare or they go into pre-K or kindergarten, all they see are women. This is, this is what I've found out. In Maine, the first, first grade you see your first male teachers are in the fifth grade. <coughs> So a little boy and a little girl live in a home where there's a very dysfunctional, unhealthy relationship. And the little boy watches the man and says, that's what men do. The little girl watches the woman and says, that's what a woman does. And they go to school and they see all these women getting along great. And then they go, you know, and this is the role models. We need to change it. We need to put healthy relationships in front of kids. And we need to do that. We have to do that. And the way we do that, one thing, is to have more male teachers in, in those early grades. And if you do that, the little boy and girl who watch mom's boyfriend abuse mom and all, they go to school, they see this man and this woman getting along really well. It's a healthy relationship. And so they have another model. We become what we watch. And the other thing I'd say, and I'll, after this, I'll, but I see too many parents that don't know how to parent because they don't appreciate their actions. They don't understand the impact they're having on children. If a parent tells a child, you say, you get mad at your child and you'll say, uh, 
you're the worst thing that ever happened to your mom and me. I wish we had never had you. You'll never amount to anything. That's hard for you to hear, but that happens. Think about your that little child impact of that. How that affects your ego, your self-esteem. We become who our parents tell us they think we are. Okay, compare that with the, the, the little child whose mom and dad said, you're the best thing that ever happened to your mom and me. You can be anything you want to be when you grow up. Think about you're that child and how that, how that fits into your brain. This is important stuff, and we don't get it very well. And that's why it's important that we, we focus. We only have 38 babies a day born in Maine. That's all we have, 14,000 kids a year. We, we have the wherewithal to make sure that every one of those children starts kindergarten ready and able to learn. And it's not about shaking your finger at a mom and dad who, who don't know how to parent. It's about helping them. They're not bad people. Most of them don't know how because they didn't have good role models themselves. I've learned this as Attorney General. And so I'm about going upstream. As governor, I look at something that's really, really good that's happening. I go upstream and look at the cause, replicate it. I look at something that's really bad. You know, we can keep remediating. And I was AG and most all of our lawyers, we just remediated. But I go upstream and look at the cause of something that's bad and change it. This government we have that Representative Saviello works with, a lot of us, we're like the remediators. We watch Humpty Dumpty on the wall, he falls off, we run over with our glue and our bandages, we put him up and put him back on the wall, and then we run back to our staging position, and we wait and watch till he falls again. I'm kind of exaggerating, but that's the government we have. We need to get into the prevention business. We need to do the right stuff right. And if we do that, you want to lower taxes, you want to reduce the size of government, you want to lift up our economy, we start making sure that every child starts kindergarten ready and able to learn. They're healthy cognitively, emotionally, you know, e every way, uh, mentally, socially, that's important. And so I just want to follow up on that question. Where does domestic violence start? It starts when little boys, or little, men are little boys and when girls. And a lot of people end up, you know, domestic abuse, it's replicated. If you're a little boy that watches your dad abuse mom, you're four times more likely to abuse your your, your, your partner than someone who's not. Think about that. I mean, this is not rocket science, it's brain science. And we know the connections, but we don't do anything about it. So, I'm not all, this isn't all I'm about, but I'm just gonna, I wanted to follow up with that question. We can keep putting people in jail, and we can keep doing that, and we can keep saying we need to build more, you know, rooms and to put people in, in mental wards and hospitals, or, and we can keep saying more people who are have substance abuse, or we can go upstream and get kids started healthy and most of them will stay healthy. So I've learned this through all my years of life. And so I'm asking all of you, particularly young men and women here today, to be good role models when you get out there. If you see something that's not right, stand up there and say, here, let me show you what I would do. And it's important. So mentoring is everything. Little kids watch you. Be a good mentor. I didn't mean to lecture, but this is really important. And when I have young folks together, I wanted to cover that. Thank you very much.